everyone. We're awake. Uh, it's a privilege to be here uh, introducing this year's J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award. There is an aura around this award. Um, the aura exists because, as we're about to do, we get to honor the accomplishments of one of our professional colleagues. It exists because we get to talk about behavior and philanthropy. But most importantly, for those that knew him, and for those who have been lucky enough to have been proximate to this award, it exists because of JJ. I didn't know JJ, but I've heard a lot of stories about him from his friends and from his family, Rabbi Yitz and Blue Greenberg, and the stories conjure up emotions like I've almost never heard from stories about other people. To me, they paint a picture of a tzad, someone whose memory survives in ways that force us to behave as the best versions of ourselves, as the menschiest versions of ourselves, as the kindest versions of ourselves. They're stories of a person who deeply loved people and lived for human interactions. Just last night, we were talking about how JJ famously used to take conference name tags like these, and he would wear them on the New York City subway, on the streets of New York, so that people would walk up and say, hi, JJ, and it would start a conversation. And that is weird and wild and that's beautiful, and I love it. <laughs> and the human interaction seemed authentic and generous in their own right, but they were also connected to something much bigger, a deep sense of both personal and professional mission to the Jewish people. He seemed to have a real understanding that actual care for the people doing the work and care for those participating in it actually have a meaningful impact on the quality of the work. A close friend of JJ's earlier this week was telling me that in the early days of birthright, when it was still a pilot, but this bold, big idea, it still is a bold, big idea, by the way. JJ would go to Israel, and he would just jump on as many buses as possible, from bus to bus to bus. And he did it to connect with participants, to learn, to empathize, to see their individual transformations themselves so that it might have a positive impact on the experience itself. To me, that is great branding. This year's award winner is a fierce advocate for Judaism, Jewish causes, Israel, and Kal Israel. It's clear from a first conversation with her. She herself describes her connection to the Jewish criminal profession as an emotional one one connected to her upbringing and her family. This year's award winner is deeply committed to programmatic and organizational excellence, a reflection of herself and the philanthropy she represents. She has incredibly high standards for herself, for her colleagues, for her grantees, and for the field in general. And those high standards are present in the organizations that many of you support, you just don't realize it. Particularly if you support it. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones who's gotten a call when I haven't necessarily lived up to her very high standards. Uh, I'll say those conversations are some combination of convincing and overwhelming. Um, I did not win those conversations. Uh, she recognizes her own role in the work of her grantees, so much so that it's actually hard to find any separation between grantee and grantor. In fact, I can't think of another philanthropic professional so engaged in the work of the grantees, from strategy to program to board service, and on and on and on. But don't let this commitment to technical and data-driven excellence fool you, because she's as much heart as she is head. Her closest colleagues and nominators actually didn't mention strategic plans or theories of change, or logic models, or evaluations. They talked about passion, and care, and persuasion, and joy, and friendship, and pride in their personal accomplishments, and her love for the Jewish people. And of course, it is those very attributes that are most central to this award, and that most embody JJ. And finally, this year's award winner roots for the worst sports teams. <laughs> Relevant, no, but very important to me that it be the final thing said before 
I invite you all to welcome and congratulate the 2022 winner of the J.J. Greenberg Memorial Award, Senior Portfolio Manager at the 1A Foundation, Tova Katz. nice things about the six time Super Bowl winning New England Patriots. <laughs> to JFN, the Greenberg family, and all of you here today, I want to express my deepest gratitude for this award in memory of JJ Greenberg's Super Bowl. JJ was a relationship builder at his core, as you just heard, who made everyone around him feel seen heard, and valued in the conversation about the Jewish future. In the Jewish philanthropic sector, relationships form the cornerstone of our work, and it's our responsibility to ensure that they're rooted in trust, genuine curiosity, and empathy. What I have learned through a decade in the field is that the Chavruta-style relationship modeled in the Talmud, where both parties feel encouraged, challenged, and elevated through honest, open dialogue can lead to incredible insights and collaborations, propelling our organizations and communities to new heights. JJ was also deeply inspiring. He inspired his friends and colleagues with his infectious smile, his love for life and preserving our planet, and his all-encompassing commitment to tikkun olam. It's hard to overstate the value of inspiration. Inspiration can drive us to dream empower us to challenge the status quo, and propel us to take bold, courageous steps forward. At its best and most powerful, inspiration drives change. To each of you I ask, from where do you derive your inspiration? Today I'd like to share the sources of my inspiration on three levels, communal, personal, and professional. On a communal level, I'm deeply inspired by the resilience of the Jewish community's response to COVID. Despite fear, uncertainty, and the tragic toll of the pandemic on millions of lives, the Jewish community remains steadfastly committed to the missions of the organizations we work for and the communities we serve. And as we know, this same urgent effort is unfolding right now in Ukraine as the global Jewish community rallies to support the Jews in Ukraine and Russia. 80 years ago, in 1942, Dr. Janusz Gorczak famously and heroically accompanied his 200 Jewish orphans out of the Warsaw Ghetto to their death in Treblinka because nobody was there to save them. Now, 80 years later, we see the uplifting images of Jewish Ukrainian orphans being evacuated out of harm's way thanks to Israel and the global Jewish community. As Natan Sharansky recently observed, for centuries, being a Jew was a death warrant. And today, in Ukraine, being a Jew is a lifeline to safety and freedom. While the situation in Ukraine remains devastating, this kind of change in fate for Jewish children and Jews trapped in a war zone is truly a miracle in our time. Witnessing the Jewish response to COVID and the war in Ukraine makes me feel so proud to be a Jew and to work in the Jewish nonprofit sector. It elevates a feeling that's often present in our work, but is felt more acutely during challenging times. It's that deeply gratifying moment when you feel perfect alignment between your personal values and your professional pursuits. When I think about the last two years and the last few weeks, the phrase that comes to mind is, Mi ka'am chai Yisrael, who is like you, nation of Israel. When I think about what inspires me on a more personal level, I need not look very far. I come from a family with deep roots in Jewish communal service. 
all of my grandparents dedicated themselves to their local insti Jewish institutions and communities. And my parents, Amy and Amy Katz, who I'm so honored to have here today, followed in their footsteps. forging their own unique impact on the Boston Jewish community and beyond. For me, 12 years of day school education, 10 summers of Jewish overnight camp, and a gap year in Jerusalem instilled an intellectual understanding of Jewish tradition and an emotional, joyous connection to Israel and the Jewish people. When it came time for me to choose a career, it seemed my path had been preordained. Both my grandmother, Sylvia Herskowitz, and my mother directed their talents and capabilities in service of the Jewish community through decades of leadership, respectively, at the Yeshiva University Museum, Combined Jewish Philanthropies, and the Partnership for Excellence in Jewish Education. Mom and Nani, thank you for setting such a shining example for me. The strong female mentorship in my family is matched only by the incredible women I'm blessed to call colleagues. To the 1-8 women's dream team, Joanna Jacobson, Karen Cohen, Alyssa Ahrens, and Michal Steinman, I'm so deeply grateful for the opportunity to work alongside you each day, collaborating with you as thought partners, and learning from you. Joanna, I know you couldn't be here today because of an ACL injury, but your unwavering commitment to meaningful, enduring impact is so profoundly inspiring. It's my greatest privilege to work with you and John to advance the change you so badly want to see in the world. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to spend the last decade addressing challenges that are both personally meaningful and pivotal to the Jewish future. Karen, there's a reason I call you my work wife. One of the most important things you've taught me is to be responsive to a person's entire being and to lead with empathy, curiosity, and kindness. Thank you for being an incredible teacher and a true friend. Outside of the 1-8 team, I've learned so much from our amazing nonprofit partners who inspire me with their vision and commitment. I especially want to thank Gil Delanos and Rocky Musher, Dave Wiener and David Siegelman, Nahum Braverman, Ethan Felsen, and Leslie Matza. I am particularly inspired by the enterprising female leaders who are innovating new ways to engage and welcome young Jews and interfaith families, continuing JJ's legacy of broadening the Jewish tent. This includes the visionary women leaders behind organizations like Base Moshe House, Jewish Kids Group, Tribal, gather, and one table. It also includes the courageous women leaders who are doing the critical work of addressing some of the oldest and most systemic barriers to the professional advancement of women and other minority groups through organizations like the Jews of Color Initiative, Leading Edge, the Safety, Respect, and Equity Initiative, and the National Council of Jewish Women. I ask all of us here today to think hard about what more we can do to strengthen and support our women leaders and advance the Jewish institutional leadership framework from the old boys club model of the 20th century to a truly equitable model that reflects the full diversity of the communities we serve. What might our community look like if we supported and celebrated all models and styles of leadership? Before I close, I want to thank my family, my husband Itamar, my parents Amy and Katz, Katz, and my dearest friend Nikki for helping me to raise four beautiful children. I'd like to close with a challenge. On the eve of the 1980 Miracle on Ice, Legendary USA hockey coach Herb Brooks told his players, great moments come from great opportunity. Well, this is our moment. We're emerging from COVID restrictions with renewed energy and optimism. We have the leadership, resources, and creativity we need to make big, bold, transformational impact. So I ask you to consider today, where do you find your inspiration? What is it motivating you to do? What's the first step you can take towards that vision? 
Let's take the week together and make this moment count. Thank you so much.